Oh, goodness. <laughs> Venice, Louisiana. This is a road trip that I've been trying to make for at least, I don't know, three or four years. And every year I've been getting weathered out. It's, um, I mean, the drive here is not, it's not terribly bad. I left from the middle of the state and we were looking at about a 13 hour drive. And, and most of it's through Florida. Once you get through Florida, you know, you're, you're, you're jumping through some states pretty quickly. So all highway miles, you know, easy trailer, another Triton and uh, not a bad trip at all. You know, when I think of Louisiana, I'm thinking it's known as a sportsman's paradise. Everything that I've seen about it in the past, I know that the fishing is incredible, I know the hunting is incredible, and it's just one of those destinations that many Florida anglers want to come to, and, and you know, I've been wanting to come here for years as well. I'll say uh, Venice, it's not for the faint of heart, man. You come down here, you bring a group of guys with you, you're going to have a great time. You can do some incredible exploring. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's a little rough, but I tell you what, if you if you know how to exploit the goodness of it, you will you will never forget the trip you've had down here. It is absolutely a man's destination. Uh, Venice Marina, Cypress Cove Marina, places to have accommodations to stay, uh, plenty of launches, bait, fuel. Uh, you'll have no uh, shortage of goodness down here when you come. So the offshore fishery here, uh, it's kind of unique. Uh, you've got a protected run down river, approximately about 30 miles or so to get out to where you're actually in the open water of the Gulf and you get this nice mix of fresh and salt water making this brackish water right on the edges of these bays. And you're gonna go out there and you're gonna see all these current seams as you're going out. You're gonna see more and more life on the, out, on the offshore uh, areas. And we have the fortunate of having the shelf that comes in very close here in Louisiana, more so than any other, other Gulf uh, state regions. Uh, we have, you know, thousand foot of water at almost uh, eight miles out. Come on, fishy, fishy, fishy. So uh, when you get out there, uh, basically you're looking for these current seams, you're looking for you know, life and bait so you can kind of knock out those fish. Uh, the big thing that we did this time, we focused on the shrimp boats. The shrimp boats get out there in this three, 400 foot of water this time of year. And as they're coming up and pulling up their uh, tail sacks and they're putting all their bycatch over, the tuna just come in and go crazy. Uh, big fish, lots of them, uh, lots of men in the gray suit swimming around as well. You gotta kind of pick through those. But if you're fortunate enough, you get out there, you get the right bite, you keep those fish on, it makes for some big fish. I mean, 100 pounders are very easy to come by, 150s, 200s this time of year. Uh, it's definitely not uncommon. We can pull up and we're just getting inundated with sharks right now. They're coming into the chum slick. That's and the tuna it, can't right? come up. What's that? That's part of it. Oh, it's all part of it. Yeah, you just gotta find the right boat. I mean, we're gonna keep ping ponging out here off these boats. We got plenty of them around us. And uh, just hope we get on the right one. That's all we can do. But we gotta sacrifice a little bit of tackle to get there. Yep. Back it up. Go ahead, take him. Real. Shark again. This is something that I haven't witnessed. I've, I've heard these stories and these giant yellowfin feeding behind a shrimp boats and the anticipation that I'm feeling, the excitement that I'm feeling that morning, I can't even describe. I got something. Smoker. Of course, it's spinning rot. Start going towards him a little bit so I don't get shark. I am, I'm gonna come. Probably, if he's up high, it's probably a shark. No, this ain't a shark. No? No, not the way he ran. I don't think so. What you got there, George? I don't know. There's a lot on the spinning rod, though. Go at him. Go, go, go. Just get right on top of him. Keep going. I'm trying those live mullet. I threw out a chunk. I saw some bonita and some blackfin, so I don't know. We get some big blackfin out here now. You'll think they're yellowfin. <clears throat> uh, 
I don't know, you think it's a shark? It's not pulling right now. You start getting some see head its tail? thumping. What's that? See its tail? I did not. I mean, look at it the way it's uh, kicking. Oh, it's a tuna! It's a tuna! It's a big yellowfin! Woo! I'll now I'm excited! <laughs> Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. I thought it was a shark the whole time. Don't horse him now, just take your time. My God, I got him on this slammer. Those last couple runs it took, I mean, that was tuna-esque to say the least. Come on, George, stay on him. Let's get him. We had to get around a rig. It got way too close for comfort, but that's how long we were on that fight if that fish didn't pull us possibly about three and a half, four miles during that fight. 100 feet down. Sean, we gotta do something here, buddy. Uh, just following, following. It got into the death spiral several times and it made another big, you know, deep uh, run. And we had to keep it out that rig. I was worried. For a while there, I thought we we're gonna lose it. And, uh, you know, after an hour and 30 minutes in that battle, I did not want to lose that fish in that rig. And George did a great job just putting good positive pressure on it, but, you know, not too much to lose that fish. God dang it. You're going right in toward that rig. Go right. All right, he's rolling on his belly now. Okay. Keep him under the boat. <clears throat> Oh, come on, 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 come on. Roll his tail hook. All right, he's got tail wrap, get it. God, get it. Woo! Grab that gap, grab that gap. Grab this one, no, just grab this, I got the tail. You ready? Lift. No! That's a trophy fish. And that's what I call it. spinning rod right there. Right there. Coming from Florida, I like my spinning rods. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, next time I think I'm gonna leave this thing at home. 9-0 trocar. 9-0 trocar on a chunk of pogey that we got from the shrimp guys. That's a bycatch. Just threw it over the back of the boat. And 130, 140 pound yellowfin, hooked perfectly in the corner of the mouth. That's what happens. You just, you want that circle hook to come up and you can have them right in the side. They, they swallow it that line won't hold up. And we fought this fish for almost two hours. That's, this is exactly why I drove like I did to get here. This is why this is oh. a, such a destination for Florida anglers. That you can come here, it's not too far of a destination. It's not some remote, exotic destination. You can get in your truck one day, drive here, spend a couple of days here, and have the possibility of catching a magnificent creature like this. Absolutely. This is a fish of a lifetime. Right awesome here. accommodations. You catch the weather right. There's no better, you know, better destination on the Gulf, I don't think. Obviously, I'm biased being from here, but it's what we came for and we got it. Did we ever? <laughs> Fantastic. Nice. Get his head in. One, two, three. Come on. Oh, that was going to fit in this 250. We'll do some creative work. How much bigger of a Yeti can I fit on, on I here? I said bring your biggest one. <laughs> Oh, I need to order a bigger one. Holy cow. Wow. Bam. Venice is one of those destinations that you come to, you shut your phone off, forget about the real world, and just hang out with the guys and just catch a ton of fish. This is a perfect destination for a fisherman because Everything is surrounded by the water. Uh, your homes are right on the water, your docks are right out back, the restaurants are right on the water. Everything supports this, this fishery. The economy is, is, you can tell, is almost completely su supported by this fishery. So they cater to the fishermen. Sometimes you travel to places to go fishing and it's not very boater friendly. Here is the ultimate boater friendly destination. Uh, you know, you come down here, you can, you can book an offshore trip, you can get a, a hunt the next morning. Um, uh, just no shortage of great stuff to do down here. So I can't say enough. Uh, you know, about just bringing a group down here, doing a man's man trip, and just having a really good time. You, you, you again, you, you won't regret it. Venice is just about good times, man. I mean, it's one of the best places in the world as far as I'm concerned. Um, 
I've fished around the world. I mean, I love it. I've fished everywhere in the United States. I've caught salmon, I've caught halibut. I've caught a lot of fish in my life. Um, but I tell you what, just going fishing here, the species we can catch, the estuary that we support here with the Mississippi River, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, truly, it's one of the few places in the world that I truly think you could go out and catch a bass, a redfish, and go out and catch you know a billfish or a tuna all in one day. That's a fact, I promise you. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Oh, our setup, you know, Sean's setup is man cave. That's all I can think to myself to describe it. So being fortunate enough to have a place here in Venice, uh, living in Louisiana, uh, it's just a fantastic place. It's a great destination for anglers to come from all over the place. Certainly Florida. Florida has a great, you know, uh, things to offer as far as fishing. I go down there all the time, uh, tarpon fish and things of that nature, but I always like to get back to Louisiana. Red fishing in Louisiana and Venice particularly is is so renowned as I keep saying and, and this is why so many Florida anglers come to this destination that these marshes are so vast. Lots of water, lots of different waterways you're coming down through, the bird life, the alligators. Uh, you get out into these open bays and you're seeing nothing but mullet and pogies and you see shrimp boats and rigs off in the distance. Then you come in and you take a little chernas in, you know, into this little back pond and all of a sudden you're full of grass. Lots of canes, uh, you're seeing uh, nutria, and again, alligators swimming around, and all of a sudden you're going to see three or four redfish swimming right down at you. It's just an experience you just can't uh, pass up. I think everybody should, if you're an angler, should do it at least once in your life. There he is. That's what I'm talking about. Right in that slick where you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You're Jig right. with a gulp on the bottom. I love it. I'm going to keep throwing, see if we can double up. They eat so much, they keep. Spitting them back up, it's just unbelievable to get these itty bitty little slicks. Not as big as I'd like, but they're out here. <laughs> Solid fish. Come out here with this lighter tackle, man. You feel it. Louisiana, man, this is why I came. Tuna, redfish, sportsman's paradise. It's only fitting you caught that big tuna on a lightweight spinner yeah. here. And you know, let's go ahead and get these big, look at that bull, there he is. That's a good fish. There you go, come on. Nice old red fish. Oh, look at his head. I mean, it's a big destination spot for people to come out here and catch these fish like that. And you can see, you know, multiple boats out here, guide boats. Oh yeah, there's a whole line yeah. of boats. George came to Louisiana to catch fish. He ended up getting a workout instead. Oh God. <laughs> That's a big redfish for this yeah. tackle. I mean, yeah, it is. that's 15 pound spider wire right there. 4,500, size real. And slammer three is perfect setup for this. Yeah. Yeah, these fish kind of, they frequent out here. They don't really move too much further in than what you see. So they're gonna be a little wider in color. They're gonna have bigger spread tails. I mean, this is our big brood stock. This is the fish that, that creates all the fish that do move inside and stay. We have some population of fish that stay inshore. We'll come out to these areas a little bit. They tend to be a little more gold in color. A little bit different shaped tail. A little more rounded on the tips. Stay up. Nice. Wow. Oh, that is what Louisiana is known for right there. Woo. What do you think that one weighs? About the size of your leg right there. That's a oh. good 25 pounder. Yeah. At least, look at that perfect hook set. Yeah. Oh, here I'm grunting. Hey. What a destination, man, for Florida anglers. Not that far of a drive to come and to have world-class fishing like this. And these back marshes in Venice, these redfish, when the conditions are right and the water's clear enough, they'll stick out like pumpkins. I mean, just the coloring of them is incredible. Um, talking to Sean, he was even saying that the inshore fish and the offshore fish almost seem somewhat of a, you know, a different shape and, and definitely a different color. These fish that are in the back, in the marsh, are a darker color, more vibrant for sure, and seem like a little fatter fish. Nice! Good fish. That's more of the tournament quality I'm looking for. It's not those big bulls, but 
Nice. Actually, you couldn't even see him coming sitting there. there. He just kind of popped up out of nowhere. But that's a fatty. That's it's a tournament fish. That's yeah. what you'd be looking for on tournament day. That's what I'd be looking for on tournament day. Let me get this one up. Have to get right up under his belly. Yeah. I'd say that's about an average redfish for us right there. I mean, that's, you know, nice little 25 inch fish, pretty. But you see how short and rounded that tail is there in comparison to what we had out there? Yeah. I mean, look at the nice little round tail. And it's just uh, how they kind of get when, you know, some of the more fish that kind of stay inside the marsh, they shape up like that a little bit. That's what we've been looking for. That's it. Sight casted to them. That's what Louisiana is known for right there. Let this little guy go to grow up to get big. Another day. I'm just gonna let him sit there for a minute and see. So you can come back and see him next year when you come back. There he goes. Nice. Hey, good job, man. Hey, brother. Good job. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Hook and Tackle, authentic performance fishing outfitters since 1963. Maui Gym sunglasses are one of the most important tools that I use throughout the day. If I were to leave home without them, trust me, I'm turning around and heading back and getting my Maui Gyms. Maui Gym sunglasses provide several benefits. There's glare elimination, color enhancement, lens protection, and eye health. All those things are important for enhancing your vision on the water at the same time protecting your eyes. You have fashion frames that can be worn every day, driving, around town. Then also you have your sport frames or your fishing frames. More of a full body frame that's gonna cover your eyes and allow a little light to get in. I often get asked what's my favorite pair of Maui Gym sunglasses to wear and it really depends on my conditions, where I'm fishing and it's in the type of water that I'm fishing. Um, you know, offshore, I think probably one of my favorite pairs is the, the Piahi, and this has the blue mirror with the gray lens, a neutral gray lens, and this is a great lens for, you know, bright conditions, it has sharp contrast, but very popular for offshore fishermen is that gray. So this is a great lens for offshore conditions. When I'm inshore fishing, a great versatile lens is the HCL Bronze. This is gonna provide a lot of contrast on the flats. You know, to see the difference in, in water quality, water depth, uh, contours of the bottom, grass beds, potholes. This bronze enables you really kind of to pick up on that contrast. And that's really good on bright days as well. Has a lot of glare protection, you know, color enhancement and all these lenses. But this is a really good lens to use when you're fishing the flats. Now on a cloudy day, um, my favorite choice is the HT lens. This is the Maui HT lens. They call this the high transmission lens. Now this is a lens that's really good on overcast days. This is gonna let in the most amount of visible light while still getting the same amount of UV protection, same amount of polarization, and it's gonna have the highest amount of contrast. I, I think I've mentioned this before, but as you age, you need more visible light in. So. The older you get, the lighter the lens needs to be so you don't strain your eye throughout the day. So I really find that this HT lens is very comfortable to wear. Maui Gym provides hundreds of frames and also in prescriptions. So go to your local Maui Gym retailer and find the perfect fit for you. That's him. Come on, reel, 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 reel. To your right, right to, tip to your right. You're, you're, you're way too in front of him. There he is. Nice, got him. Nice slow. That was awesome. Oh, slow eat right there. God, you just, you see cool him just nose that, down yeah. on it? God, that's an awesome slow eat. That was fantastic. Wow. There's two of them. You played that perfect. He just nosed down on that gulp and just slurped it up. We came back in this little cove and it's nice and calm and a little better visibility. Immediately saw two fish. Threw a gulp right in front of him and just let it die right it's in so front cool of him. to see him nose down on it. Tail came up and he just ate it. Patience is a game. That's <laughs> why so I came. Look at that green grass. It gets so pretty back in here. This is why everybody comes. Yeah. It's a little hook, so. Yep. Yeah. That's what it's about right there, my friend. Well done on that. Pretty copper color back here. This fish right here is truly probably about five years old being right at the size of what they are. So, 
Man, I'm happy to get that one. That's a pretty fish. That was the one we were looking for. Put it right there in front of that fish. That yeah. was awesome. Thanks for pointing him out. Let's get him back Great in. Great eat. All right. Another nice catch and release. All right. There you go. Nice. Yeah, a lot of people make that mistake. They release those fish right away, and they kind of get disoriented when you have them out, and they turn belly up, and they take off to fish. I've come back behind people, and I just see redfish laying belly up. You gotta take that time, wait till they want to take off and swim themselves. We gotta keep them for generations to come. Anybody can get a fish and have an amazing day out here uh, any given day of the week. Get one of these trips, and I promise you, you will not forget it. And you can always just stay up in New Orleans. Great food, so many restaurants. I mean, it's just, you'll never forget it. You'll come back every year. You'll make it a yearly destination, I assure you. You're just gonna be counting the days. Ah, oh, you son of a yeah. Nice. <laughs> Keep talking. Oh, Keep hang tight. Nice. Hang tight. Oh, I need some emergency room nursing over here, stat.